Hi and welcome to Priori Digital Studio Tutorial. In this video, I will show you how to set up and use your wedding planner spreadsheet in the most efficient way. In this video, I'm using Go Sheets, but the Excel version is exactly the same. First thing, we protect most of the cells where there are formulas to make sure that you don't erase any important formulas that could impact the spreadsheet. So if you see this message, it means you are not supposed to touch it. But don't worry, I'll show you step by step how to prepare your spreadsheet. If by mistake you do touch a cell that is locked, don't worry and simply click on the X and you will be fine. Moreover, we establish a color code to show you which cells can be edited and which one cannot. So basically, you can only edit the cells where you can see a white background. All the color cells are locked and you should not edit them. On another important note, please do not move a cell from one place to another. If you do move a cell, it could generate an issue by messing up the automatization of the spreadsheet. The best way to avoid these errors is to copy and paste your data. Now let's take a look at the setup tab. Within this tab, you'll find multiple tables that are essential to populate your data in the following tabs. So the first table is the main information of your wedding, like your names, the date and the location. Then there's a specific area to define your currency. And then after that, there are four tables to populate some drop down menus in the following tabs. Don't worry, if you forget to enter information in one of these tables, you could still come back to this tab and add more data. And on the right hand side of this tab, you will see a design to save the date. And on the left hand side of this tab, you will find a ribbon with a list of all the tabs to easily navigate through them. For example, if I want to go to the guest list tab, I simply have to click on the guest list link and then the spreadsheet will automatically bring you to this specific tab. And at the top of this ribbon, you have the number of days left before your wedding day. So let's take an example together. This tab is really easy to set up. You simply have to type in the information. So here I simply typed in the name of the groom, the bride, and I double click. As you can see, there's a small calendar and then I simply chose the date. If you are on Excel, you will have to type in the date. Then I wrote the location. For the currency, I simply typed in my currency symbol, but you could change it for euros or pounds, for example. So let's enter some information in accommodation, for example. You can simply type in something like a venue and we will see later it's going to be added to some drop down menus within the other tabs. Now let's take a look at the save the date tab. In this tab, there are three different designs that will allow you to print and send a save the date invitation to your wedding guests. So you simply have to select the design you want with your mouse and click on the printing icon. A page will open and you will be able to change the printing option to make it fit on a page. So simply select selected cells, then the paper size you want. In my case, I will select letter, then portrait and make it fit in a page. As you can see now, it looks great and I could simply print this and send it to my guest. So once it is done, simply click on next and then on print. In my case, I will not do it since I'm not ready to print it yet. So I will simply click on cancel. Now let's take a look at the timeline tab. This tab will help you list all the tasks and deadlines you have to do before the wedding day to be sure to not forget anything. So there are eight tables separated chronologically and in each table you can enter the deadline, the person in charge, the priority and the description. Once the task is done, you simply have to tick the checkbox and your task will be strike through. All right, so let's take an example together and I will show you how to enter information in this tab. So simply select a date. So if you are on Google Sheet, you can simply double click and you will see this little calendar appearing. If you're on Excel, you would have to type in the date. So we will simply select today's date. Then we can uh, use the drop down menu to select the person in charge. As you can see here, it's either the groom, the bride or both. So the information is pulled out directly from the setup tab that we just saw. So in this case, I will simply select John and then I will also select the priority. So this is, let's say medium, and then I can write the description. So in my case, it would be look at venues. 
and then you can enter all the information in the similar way in all the tables. Now let's explore the itinerary tab. In this tab, you will be able to do a detailed planning of your wedding day, as well as all the other days, either before or after, like a reception the day before or a brunch the day after. You have five different tables for five potential days to schedule. These tables are quite flexible, so you can enter a time, the event, the person in charge, and there are also a lot of space for description. So let's take an example together. You will see this is very simple. You simply have to type in all the information. So here you can select the date or if you are on Excel, type in a date. Then let's scroll down a little bit down the table and then let's simply write a time, let's say 2 a.m. So let's say cleanup ends, since as you can see a little bit above, we have cleanup begins. So here we will write the venue staff, and then we could write any description. So as you can see, it's very simple. You simply have to type in all the information needed. Now let's take a look at the packing list tab. This tab will help you to list all the items you would need for your wedding. So you simply have to enter the name of the item and then the person in charge. You can simply click on the drop down menu to select the right person and then the status. When it's checked, it means that you have the item in your luggage, for example, and as you can see, it's becoming strike through. As you can see here, we divided the tables in three. So you have a space dedicated for the wedding weekend, then one space for your honeymoon. And if you scroll down, you have a separated space for others in case of specific things or items to bring. So let's take an example together. Let's simply write passport in our honeymoon table. And then let's say that Emily is in charge of bringing the passport. Once the passport are in the backpack or the luggage, simply click and as you can see, it's a strike through. Now let's take a look at the vendor's choice tab. In this tab, you will be able to list all your vendors to select the most appropriate one for your needs. You have up to 25 different vendor types and for each of them, you have a specific table. 18 of them are predefined, but you have also seven additional tables to add more vendors if needed. For each of them, you could define their name, the contact with their phone number, the email address, as well as the package quote or the name of the package, and then the amount quoted. You also have some spare space for notes. Once you have made your choice, you simply have to tick the checkbox in front of the name of the vendor you select. The line will then be highlighted in green. So as soon as you tick a vendor with your choice, you will see it appearing in the summary table and in the right category. Then at the top of the page, you have a summary of all your vendors, the amount of money you think you will spend in each vendor category, and then the percentage of each of them. Then on the right hand side, you have two charts that shows you the vendor distribution as well as all the amounts in each categories. So now let's take an example together and fill in some information. So let's say I want to add one more florist option. So I will simply write the name of the vendor. So let's say blooming creation, then type in the phone number. Then I can simply also type in the email address. You could also like copy and paste this information. And then let's say the package is called elegant wedding floral package. And let's say the amount is $2,200. So let's say I want this florist. I will simply have to tick the checkbox and then this amount will be added to the summary above. This tab will be very useful to see all the vendors you might think to get and also to plan your budget. This tab is also linked with a lot of other tabs, so be careful to fill it in properly and put as much information as needed. Now let's take a look at the contact information tab. So this tab will help you stay organized and visualize all your vendors and important contact at the same place. So in case of emergency the day before the wedding, simply open this tab and you will be able to contact the appropriate person. You could also share this with other people and they will be able to communicate between them to prepare you a surprise, for example. You could also give this table to your wedding planner and she or he would have all the necessary information to help you plan your wedding.
So the first table is for your close contacts, like your close family, your bridesmaids, and the best man, for example. To enter information in this tab, you simply have to type in their names, the relationship with you, their contact info, like their phone number and their email address. So let's enter some information together. So let's say Jane Doe, for example, the relationship will be bride's best friend. Then you would simply have to type in a phone number as well as an email address. So now we can scroll down to this second table. As you can see, this table is for your vendors. So this table is totally automated based on the information previously filled in the vendor's choice tab. As you can see as well, the background of this table is not white. It's like light yellow, meaning that everything is automated. On an important note, the information displayed is only for the vendors you ticked the boxes in the previous tab, meaning that they are the vendors that you decided to go with. Another interesting feature is that, as you can see, you can have more than one florist, for example. Same thing for wedding planners, rentals, etc. Now let's have a look at the calendar tab. This tab is designed to be very intuitive, requiring minimal data input or changes. It serves as a calendar to help you forecast future deadlines. To begin using this tab, simply type in the year and then select the month you wish to visualize using the drop-down menu. You can also choose to start day of the week between Sunday and Monday. Once selected, the entire calendar for the chosen month will be displayed. It's important to note that this tab is linked with two other tabs, the timeline tab as well as the budget tab, allowing for the display of data from those tabs. On the left-hand side of the calendar, you can add punctual deadlines by entering a description and a due date. Once this information is entered, simply check the checkbox to mark the task as completed. So as you can see now, when I check the checkbox, we can see that it also is checked within the calendar. You also have two different filter features at the top of the tab. In the first one, you can select to show the task done, left to do, or all the tasks. So you simply use the drop down menu to select the one you want to see. So as you can see now, when I select the not done tasks, we only see tasks that are not checked. If I select the done task, we can see all the tasks that are checked. In the second filter feature, you can select if you want to see your data from your budget, the timeline tab, and or the punctual deadline we have just below. So now let's take an example together. Let's say that you want only to see your financial deadlines that you would have to pay in the following weeks. Then you would have only to select the not done task, so using the drop down menu and then only tick the budget tab. So in our case here, we will untick the timeline and the punctual deadlines. So as you can see within the month of March, I would have to pay for the cake, the wedding planner, the rentals, and so on. Be careful if you unselect everything, the calendar will not show you any data and a warning will appear in this situation. So now let's have a look at the budget tab. The budget is a really important part of a wedding and like in any project, it is not always easy to stick to it, but this tab will definitely be your ally. So the first thing to do before starting anything is to know how much money you are willing to put into your wedding, including potential help from your family and friends. This will define your budget. So in the wedding budget contribution table, enter the name of the different contributors and the money they are willing to pay. So in this example, we have money saved, the friend gifts and parents contribution. If you want to add more information, you simply type in someone who is willing to give you money for your budget as well as the amount. Then you have two different tables on the left. It is the table for all your expenses that are not associated with a vendor. Then on the right, it is specific for the vendors. So on the left table, you only have to enter a category name and a budget associated. The amount paid and the different columns are fully automated and I will explain them later. So as you also can see, the amount paid and the difference are in light yellow. So meaning that they are automated and you should not enter any information in those cells. 
Concerning the vendor's table, everything is automated based on the vendor's choice tab. Concerning the contract price, as you can see, the column is white, so you will be able to edit it. But there are formulas in this column that are also displayed data from the vendor's choice tab. That way, if the amount is not exactly the same, you will be able to edit here. The amount paid and the difference column are fully automated and I will explain everything to you later on in this tutorial. So now let's take an example together and let's enter an expense category. So let's enter something like wedding insurance, for example. And then let's say the budget is $500. So now that we saw all about how we can set up the budget, let's scroll down and we will see two tables that are two different transaction trackers. Basically, these two tables update the amount paid and the difference column that we saw above. The left table is here to track all the transactions for your expenses outside your vendors. Whereas the table on the right hand side allows you to compile all the due and past transactions for your vendors. So in the first table, you simply have to enter the date, a category previously entered in the table above, select with the drop down menu the person who paid, and this list comes from the setup tab, and then the real amount paid. And we also left some space for description. So let's take an example together. So let's select the date, let's take today's date, and then let's select a category. So let's say engagement party expenses. And then it was paid by John's uncle. So John, don't forget, is the groom. And let's say that he paid $500. So now that we entered a, an expense of $500, if we scroll up, we will see that this amount was added to the engagement party expenses. So now let's check out the vendor's payment tracker. The way it works is very similar to the expense tracker. You simply have to select the vendor type with the drop down menu, then the vendor's name and the person who paid. You can add the due date, which could be in the past or in the future and the amount due. When the payment is done, you simply have to enter the paid date and tick the checkbox. So let's take an example together with the vendor's payment tracker. Let's use the drop down menu to select a vendor. So let's select the photo and videographer. Now let's use the drop down menu to select the vendor's name. We only have two choices here because we only tick two vendors from the vendor's choice tab. So let's simply click on captured moments photography. And then let's decide on who paid this. So let's say it was John's uncle. So let's say that the due date was today, so March 16th, and then the paid date was today as well. And then the amount was also $500. So now let's go up to see what happens in the table above. So if we look at the photo and videographer section, the captured moment photography, the amount paid is still at zero. So meaning that don't forget that when it's paid, you absolutely need to check the checkbox and then we will see that it will be paid above as well. So as you can see now, the amount paid is $500. Now let's have a look at all the charts at the top of the tab. You have a chart that displays the vendor types by price and you can select which vendor types you want to display within this table. So you can use the drop down menu to play with the graph basically. So let's click on bartender. As you can see, everything is moving. So let's change another one and change the venue for wedding rings. As you can see, it's also changing. So basically you can display all the vendors that you want to see. And if you display twice the same vendor or the same category, as you can see, it will be highlighted in yellow. You also have different pie charts that shows you the percentage left to budget and left to spend, as well as an expense distribution chart where you can see where you spend most of your money. Now let's have a look at the guest list tab. This tab allows you to list all the people you want to invite to your wedding and check if they accept or not your invitation. So you simply have to list all the people you invite, what is their relationship to your couple, if they save the date and the invitation is sent or not, and as well as their answer. 
You can also track their accommodation based on the list in the setup tab and also track after the wedding if they gave you a gift or not. Of course, you can also add their addresses to be able to send them their invitation and you can also add a phone number and an email address if needed. At the top of the page, you will see the total number of guests, the number of invitations sent and the total number of confirmed guests. You will also find four pie charts that displays the tags, distribution, the percentage of invitations sent, and the percentage of responses. So let's take an example together and scroll down to enter some information. So let's simply write a name. So let's say Jane Doe. And then use the drop down menu to select a relationship. So let's say bride's friend. Then use the drop down menu for the save the date. So let's say it was sent. Then let's use the drop down menu for the invitation. This one was also sent. And then is she attending the wedding or not? She's of course attending. As well as the accommodation, let's say she will be sleeping in the venue. And then let's use the drop down menu to know if she did give a gift and let's say she did give one, so yes. Then as you can see here, you could have entered her address as well as her contact. So phone number and emails. So as you can see at the top left of this tab, you have a filter button. You can click on it or scroll right and you will see another table where you will be able to filter all your data. So this feature is very useful if you plan to have a huge wedding with a lot of guests. You can easily find the guests that you are looking for instead of simply scrolling up and down to find information. So you can use five features or five filter features to find the guests that you are looking for. You can filter them either with the tag, the invitation. So did you send an invitation? Yes or no. Did they send a gift? Yes or no. The save the date as well if they reserve their place to your wedding. So let's take an example together and filter with the tags. So let's select the bride friend. So as you can see here, we can find our Jane Doe. So now let's filter with another example. So let's click on the couple's friend. So as you can see here, we have a lot of people. So now let's filter the couple's friend and by invitation. So let's click on send. So as you can see here, all those people were our couple's friend and they have an invitation sent. So let's look at their reservation. Are they attending or not? So let's click on attending. So as you can see, the more filter feature you click on, the more filtered the data are. If you want to remove the filter, simply delete what you selected. So click on delete again and again, you will see your full data. So now let's take a look at the wedding party tab. This tab is very flexible and you can basically enter any information that you wish to that could be useful for your wedding. So here we have different tables with different type of people like bridesmaid, groomsmen, and etc. This will help you plan how they are organized within your wedding. So you can simply enter their name, the role within your wedding. You can also write the aisle order. Do they escort someone? The status of their attire? Do they have an appointment for it? And also task or uh, any other notes. So this is really simple and you only have to type in information or use the drop down menu. So let's take an example. Let's say the bridesmaid, we also have Jane Doe. She is the bride's friend and she's also one of the bridesmaids. So we simply select this position. She will be in aisle two and then she will be escorted by a groomsman. And then let's say the attire, she has a purple uh, dress and her dress is ordered. And then she also had an appointment, so that's done. And then we can write whatever task or description or notes needed. So now let's have a look at the venue options tab. So this tab will help you to define which venue is the best for your couple according to your budget and compare five different venues together. So the first thing is to select your venues. So you can use the drop down menu to select all the five venues that you would want to compare. Once it is done, don't touch it anymore because your data will not be deleted if you change the venue afterwards. The name of the venue comes from the vendor's choice tab. 
Their contacts are also automated. However, you can easily add their website, location, and guest capacity to be able to take a better decision. For the guest capacity, you simply have to add a number and the word guest will be added automatically. So in the location, you can write the full address or simply the region. So we could write something like California, for example. Then you can add a photo of the venue. The best is to add a link here, but you could also directly add a picture in the cell. If you do that, you will overwrite the formula inside the cell and the link will not work anymore. So let's take an example on how we could change a photo, for example. So let's delete this one. And then let's go on the internet and find a nice venue. So we found this one. And then make sure to right click and then click on open image in a new tab. So once the tab is open, we'll make sure that the URL is finishing by something like JPEG or PNG or any other photo format. Then you would have to copy this URL. So control C, go back to the spreadsheet and then control V in this bar here. As you can see, it can take a little bit of time to load the picture. Then right below the picture, you can list all your costs for each category that you previously defined. So let's add another category. So let's write something like valid fees. And then let's write some costs for all our venues. So let's say $100 for this one. And then for the second one, let's write $200, $50 for the third one, and so on. So if you scroll down a little bit, you will see the total for all your venues. And then you can also take some notes on specific things like allowing dogs or animals, allowing kids, things like this. So based on all the costs and all the features of all the venues, you can easily make a choice. So once you decided on the venue, you can simply tick the checkbox. And then as you can see, everything will be highlighted in light pink. So now let's take a look at the food and drinks tab. The way it works is the same as for the previous tab. This tab aims to help you decide on the meal option, which would be the best for your wedding, including the caterer and the bartender. So at the top, you can select the caterer and the bartender you selected for your wedding or you decided on for your wedding. The contact and the email addresses are automated based on the vendor choice tab, and then you can add their website if needed. So to add their website, you can simply copy paste the, the, the website address in the table. So if you scroll down, you will find five big tables, including three options within each of them. That way you can decide which meal option is the best for your appetizer, main course, desserts, dietary needs, and beverage. And also define the total price of your food and drink for your wedding. So once you decided on your caterer and bartender, the first thing that you would have to do is to enter all the meals option. We already entered information into the option one and option three. So let's enter information in the option two. So you simply have to type in the menu. So in our example, it's the coconut shrimps. And then the amount for this meal is $2 and we would have a quantity of 75. Then the second option is the antipasti platter. And the amount would be $5. And then we would have a quantity of 125. As you can see, the total column is automated. Same thing as the total amount. So what you need to do is basically compare all the menus and total amount. And when you are ready to decide, you simply tick the checkbox. As you can see, once you tick, it becomes highlighted in light pink. So now that we tick the appetizer option as well as the main course option, if we scroll up, we will already see that the amount in main course went from zero to more than 10,000 and same thing for the appetizer. 
Then in the global overview, you will see the global amount that you are willing to pay, meaning the 10,000 for the main course added with the appetizer. So now let's continue to scroll down and decide on all the options. So let's decide on the dessert option, the dietary option, as well as the beverage option. So this way you can easily see all the parts of your meal, how much it will cost you, as well as the global overview or the global amount that you will have to pay for your wedding meal. So now let's have a look at the seating plan tab. This tab is really useful to help you know where your guest will be seated during your reception. So in this tab you have up to 30 different tables with up to 15 guests per table. So the first table is the one for the wedding couple, so the first two seats are already taken. But in all the other tables you can use the drop down menu to select a guest to be seated. To help you know the guests that are waiting to be seated, you can take a look at the list on the right hand side of this tab. This list is sorted alphabetically. And to help you visualize your guests in this list, you can use the filter at the top to filter them by tags. So let's use the drop down menu and click on couples friend. So as you can see here, we only have Mr. Ryan to be placed on a table. If you want to remove this filter, simply click on it and click on delete. So now let's take an example and fill table number five together. You simply have to select your guest with the drop down menu. And once your guests are seated, they will not appear anymore in the drop down menus. And they also will be removed from the confirmed guest to be seated. So let's say now that you want to move someone from one place to another then simply delete this person from his actual seat and replace him with this new place. So as you can see, Nicholas went from table five to table two. So if you want to switch two people, then you have two options. You can either delete the two guests from their seats and they will appear in the list to be seated on the right hand side or you could change their name with the drop down menu. Temporarily, this person will be assigned to two seats. And as you can see, its name will appear highlighted in yellow. Then after that, simply delete the first seat where you removed this person from and replace it with another guest. Very important in this tab, do not move a cell from one place to another. It will mess up all the formulas and drop down menus. You will have to restart the spreadsheet from scratch if you move all the cells. Then at the top of the page, you have three statistics concerning your seating plans with the total number of guests, the number of occupied seats and the number of people waiting to be seated. So now let's have a look at the photo tab. This tab is really straightforward and allows you to see all the photos of your wedding in one place. The only thing that you have to do is to add the URL link to your photos. So it's perfect if all of your photos are in your drive, for example. So once it is done, the photo will appear automatically and you will be able to make it fit in the cell. Compress your images or keep the original size. Personally, I recommend the first option to better see your photos. The other option in this tab would be to directly add your photo in this cell by clicking on insert, then image and insert image in the cell. But this operation will delete the formula in the cell and you will not be able to use the hyperlink anymore. So to add your URL or your link, you basically do the same step as we did for the venue options. So now let's take a look at the gifts and thank you tabs. This tab allows you to track all the people that came to your wedding and or sent you a gift and make your life easier to thank them. So the first column is completely automated based on your guest list tab. And basically everyone will appear if they attended your wedding and or if they sent you a gift or money. Then for example, let's say your old aunt that lives very far from you and could not attend your wedding unfortunately, but she did give you money, you would probably want to thank her. So you have the possibility in this tab. 
As an important note, make sure to not change the guest list tab before adding any data to this tab because the names of your guests will be shifted, while your data in the following columns will not. So once your wedding is finished and you are a happily married couple, it is time to thank everyone. So the first thing that you would want to do is simply to enter the type of gift that the guest gave you. It could be either cash, a gift, or none. Then you can list the amount or approximate amount of money or the gift type. The address is automated based on the guest list to help you send the gift or the thank you card at the right place. In our case, we did not enter any address in our guest list tab, hence why we don't have much addresses. And once you've sent the thank you card, simply tick the box and it will be strike through. So this way you can easily track who you sent thank you cards to and who you did not yet. Then at the top, you have two pie charts for the gift distribution as well as the distribution of how many percentage you sent thank you to and the one you did not. Then on the right hand side of the tab, you also have the possibility to filter your data and in particular the gift category and if you already sent a gift or not, a thank you card or not. Then you can also filter by the amount paid. So let's click on the gift category. So let's click on cash and then thank you sent, yes or no. So let's say yes. And then we can filter by amount paid. So let's say uh, in between 101 and $500. So as you can see here in our example, we would have a few people who sent cash in between $100 and $500. Then if you want to remove the filter, simply select the data above here and click on delete. As you can see, all the data will reappear again. So let's take another example for the amount paid. I kept the cash and the okay for people who sent. Now let's customize the amount paid. So you can write a minimum. So let's say $15 and then 150. So as you can see here, we have everybody who's between 15 and 150. So now let's delete all the filters. So we can simply delete everything that we selected and all the data will reappear. So now let's have a look at the honeymoon tab. The honeymoon tab will ensure you stick to your budget and not overspend while traveling during this precious time. So the first thing that you want to set up in this tab is entering the date of your travel. If you are on Google Sheets, you can simply double click and select the date on the small calendar. If you are on Excel, you will have to type in the date. Then you need to prepare your budget in the budget summary table. So you will want to enter the category and the budget associated. So in this example, we entered a few categories already like transport, accommodation, food, activities. However, you can divide your categories differently from us. Then we also set up a budget for each categories. So for example, here we put $750 for transport, $800 for accommodation, $1,000 for food, etc. You see the drill. So let's add another category called flight. And let's say we plan to spend $1,500. Perfect. As you can see now, the real and the percentage column are in light yellow, meaning that they are automated and you should not enter any information. I will come back to those two tables later on in this tutorial. So while you are traveling or before your trip, you will have to track your expenses in the transaction tracker. You will want to enter the date, the amount, and select the category with the drop down menu. So let's take an example together and enter a transaction. So let's select the date, let's say June 13th, and then let's enter an amount. It was $1,200. And let's select the category, which is a flight, the one that we just entered. We also left some space for description if needed. So at the end of your travel, your transaction tracker will be filled and you'll start to see data on the left. You will also see the cumulative of your expenses per day and how much left you have to budget. Then at the top, you will see your expenses breakdown and a graph with your cumulative expenses versus your budget. For each category, you can see the amount budgeted and how much you spent in real life. So those are the two columns that I talked earlier. So as you can see now, we see how much we spend for each categories as well as the percentage. 
on the left hand side you will see in the calendar the days where you spent the most in brown and the days where you spent the less in green. Below the calendar, you also have a currency exchange calculator. So to use it, simply select your country and the country you plan to travel to. If you cannot find your country in the drop down menu, write it here and write the three letters of the currency. Those three letters can be easily found on the internet. Then again, look for your country in the drop down menu. Then in domestic currency, write the amount of money you are planning on using and see how much you will get in the foreign currency. You will be able to properly forecast how much you need for your trip. Moreover, on the right hand side of the spreadsheet, you have the possibility to add your accommodations, your travel arrangement and your itinerary details. All these informations are simply typed in and you can put as much details as you want. If you are interested in a more detailed travel planner spreadsheet, you can follow the link that appears now and it will bring you to our shop where we have multiple different travel planners. So finally, now let's have a look at the dashboard tab that I skipped at the beginning of this video. This tab will help you to visualize all your data from this spreadsheet. There are a lot of charts and tables to help you easily manage your wedding. So at the top left of the tab, you will see a small calendar with your wedding day highlighted. Then just below, you have a summary of your timeline tab with all the remaining tasks to do for each period. Just below, you have your total number of guests, the number of invites sent and the confirmed guests, as well as the number of guests seated at a table. And finally, the total number of tables. Then right below, we also have the names of all the people that are waiting to be seated. Then if you scroll up a little bit, you have the main picture of your photo tab, followed by the task due today based on the calendar tab. If one of the tasks needs to be paid or if this is something that you have to pay for, then you will see the amount. If this is something that you need to do, but it is free or you don't have to pay anything, as you can see here, there's no amount associated. Then right below this, you have a table to remind you of the important upcoming deadlines. Then you will find a section more dedicated to your budget with your total budget, a pie chart for the left to budget and the left to spend amount, as well as the expense distribution. Concerning the budget, you also have a spending overview as well as the vendor's contract prices. Then finally, at the top right, you will have four pie charts with the guest tag distribution, the response distribution, as well as the save the date and invitation distribution. So that's it. I hope this tutorial helps you easily set up your spreadsheet. Don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions or concerns and follow Priori Digital Studio on YouTube for sneak peeks on our new templates.